let's start things off by calling Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut exactly what it is. Not a Director's Cut. I'm not sure what PlayStation is trying to achieve by kicking off this new subtitle trend, but the nature of game development is that things getting quote unquote cut doesn't really apply here in the same way as film. Even still, this PlayStation 5 remaster of the PS4's open world swan song now looks and plays better than ever, indeed granting players something fresh to look forward to by way of haptic feedback and the Iki Island expansion. Does it warrant a return trip to these Japanese shores? You bet. I'm Aaron from Console Deals, now let's get into why. At its core, Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut is very much the same experience as before. You take on the role of Jin Sakai, one of Tsushima's last standing samurai, who must collect himself and slowly advance his swordsmanship skills to hold off the invading Mongolian forces. The difference now, however, is that you have the ability to do so alongside a suite of extra performance enhancements. The standard PS4 version achieved a fairly solid 60fps on Sony's next-gen console by way of a patch, true, but Director's Cut blows this out of the water. You now have the option to play the game at 4K resolution. This does sacrifice the incredibly smooth frame rate, but Ghost of Tsushima is the type of game where 30fps isn't all that bad, seeing as it's inherently cinematic anyway. Sadly, there's no mixed frame rate or resolution option similar to what Insomniac added to Spider-Man Miles Morales post-launch, but both display modes on offer here do well to present the setting of Tsushima absolutely beautifully. Harnessing the full power of PS5 really works wonders whenever you stop to watch the sunset or the fog slowly roll in. At times, I continue to ask myself, how is this still an open world game? Other PS5 specific features obviously include the DualSense haptic feedback, and while it would have been easy for developer Sucker Punch to implement some harsher vibrations and be done with it, it's the tactile nuance present in Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut that impressed me most. Simple acts like galloping on your horse Nobu or breaking down a doorframe each offer a distinct feeling in the palm of your hands. Up until now, we've only been treated to what the DualSense can do in a shooter in first-party games, a la Returnal or Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. But here, it's clear that in Director's Cut, the haptic feedback's untapped subtlety is hard at work. Even summoning the wind sends a satisfying breeze through your fingers. All these different elements are solid, but somewhat expected. However, a much requested issue that Director's Cut also resolves is lip-syncing. I still don't know why it warrants being exclusive to PlayStation 5, I'm no dev, but finally Ghost of Tsushima can be played in Japanese as it was meant to be, with true Japanese lip syncing achieved in real time. Whereas previously the only way to experience the game this way looked like the audio track had simply been replaced, here everything now matches perfectly. This is an amazing achievement that truly showcases the brilliance of Tsushima's Japanese voice cast, and only contributes to the Akira Kurosawa vibes more when bundled in with the visual black and white display mode. Of course, the standout in Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut is the new Iki Island expansion, and this is where the feeling of cut content really settles in, even if this aspect of Jin's story takes place after the main story's campaign. Accessible any time after you reach Act 2, this side journey sees Jin venture to the titular setting when he hears word that an untamed Mongol sect is gaining ground. Known simply as the Eagle Tribe, they'll test Jin's abilities to stay true to the ways of the samurai as he learns more and more about the nature of his father's death. Just how personal Iki Island's narrative ends up being is actually quite surprising. Not only because it provides an ample opportunity to learn more about our protagonist, who has until now been quite stoic, but also as it offers context to the wider Sakai clan. Without going into too much detail, Iki Island sees Jin Sakai stripped of his knowledge and at his most vulnerable. Not least because the main antagonist likes to fight with words instead of traditional weapons. And at pace, the expansion should roughly only take you the same length as one of the main game standard acts, but it's absolutely worth playing for Tsushima fans hungry for more. From a pure gameplay perspective, not too much has changed in Jin's visit to Iki Island either. Clearing out the Mongolian menace still involves a good mixture of taking down enemy forts, meeting up with new allies, and exploring different regions in order to gain new armour and power up. 
However, it's made clear early on that this is a journey intended for experienced players only, as a new enemy type known as Shaman can pose a real problem. They can cheer on more familiar foes to temporarily buff their skills, introducing a dynamic that forces you to choose between assassinating shamans early or dealing with the enemies in front of you first. Both methods still require you to play out tactfully, and is just one example of how Icky Island introduces a handful of new combat factors to be aware of. Despite presenting you with a similar structure, Icky Island itself comes across as distinct thanks to all new sights to see. One of the first areas you visit, for example, sees you travel through a seaside cove, being portrayed in stark contrast to the base game's wheat fields and run-down villages. Couple this with a slightly more unique colour palette full of pinks and purples, and it's never hard to recognise you're very much not in Tsushima anymore. Iki Island also encourages you to explore out this various scenery by presenting a handful of combat skills for Jin too. We won't spoil too much, other than to say that using Nobu to smash into enemy clusters never stopped feeling great, especially with the new Dual Sense features now in hand. Ultimately, is Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut worth playing on PS5? It's a no-brainer for those yet to experience Jin's samurai adventure, sure, yet equally, the Iki Island expansion and excellent Dual Sense integration makes it an enticing prospect for returning players as well. In some ways, it is a shame that this PS5 upgrade will never be the true coming out party for Ghost of Tsushima that it deserves, but there's still plenty extra here to wow PlayStation owners all over again. Offering much more than what a simple patch could ever achieve, this so-called Director's Cut is now easily the ideal way to play. We give Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut a 4 out of 5. Another hunter, desperate for my armor and the power of the Sarugami.